Hello everyone, welcome to Made to Dream. I'm your host, Maya Chanel. Here we share stories from women around the world to inspire a change and transformation for women to dream with unlimited possibilities. Today we have the ultimate pleasure of being with Miss Wendy and we've already been talking a little bit before we started the show. So I'm excited to share this conversation with you guys because you know, if you don't know yet, Health and fitness is really true and dear to me. So, hi, Wendy. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so much for bringing me on to your show. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me today. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Like, I'm excited for our conversation, and I know that everyone's just going to get so much out of it, and just it's going to be life-changing. So why don't you go ahead, introduce yourself a little bit, um, allow the audience to get to know you and what you do. Sure. So my name is Wendy Kleinke and I am a, a fitness everything. <laughs> so I've been involved in the fitness industry since um, the early 2000s. And what kind of brought me into that industry was my own, um, my own experience with um, body image and um, decreased muscle mass and having a lot of pain from being a very, very thin woman. And I had two very young daughters at the time. And I found, I just, I had a, a, a work colleague and I was kind of complaining about how, you know, it was really painful for me to sit through a movie and I didn't want to go and do that because I just, it just was super uncomfortable and it wasn't really worth it. And I was very skinny and people would comment to me about how thin I was regularly. You know, people would say kind of awful things to me. And oh I gosh. just, yeah, like you, you'd be amazed at the things that people will say to somebody who's very skinny. It's, oh my goodness. It's very appalling. Like you, you just, <laughs> anyways, not to get into all of that, but I was getting a bit of a complex about it and I was really trying to gain weight. And I asked my doctor and he was like, well, how old are you? And I, I think I was like, maybe like 24. He's like, oh, you won't have that problem when you're 30. Well, what am I supposed <laughs> to do in the next six years? You know what I mean? Like, that's not helpful. So right. um, I was just kind of complaining about it to a coworker who was in a gym advocate. And he told me, he's like, honey, you just need to go pick up some weights. You need to go join the gym and you need to, you need to put some muscle on your body. And I was like, oh, you know what? I'm going to do that. So that's what I did. And I cannot tell you how much better I felt. And that was just kind of the, the beginning of it for me. So mm -hmm. at that point in time, I fell in love with fitness. I fell in love with the difference that it made in my body and um, how much better I felt. I mean, I had joint pain. I was a young woman, mm. young woman. Right. And I had all kinds of like aches and pain. Like you think I was an old lady <laughs> with the stuff <laughs> I complained about. And um, so that was kind of the beginning of it for me. And I dove right into going to school. Mm -hmm. And I did kind of go back and forth a little bit about that because I had some people caution me. Um, some people that loved me said, you know, you're not going to make any money in that. They, there's no money in that. So I, I veered a different way for mm -hmm. probably a year. And then I was like, you know what? I can't, I can't go. I, I, I love math, but I love fitness more. So mm -hmm. I went right back into it. I got a degree in exercise science and again, had veered away a little bit from the exercise and started looking more on the research component of it. So I was mm -hmm. looking more on the health side. Didn't take me long to find my way back into fitness. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I found that um, I really liked the proactive side of it rather than the reactive side of exercise and mm -hmm. started working at a corporate wellness gym and then worked for a nonprofit, uh, worked for several for-profit gyms, ran my own business. Now I do um, my own business alongside of, um, with the target being um, small group fitness for accountability. And mm -hmm. I also run a consulting service for fitness professionals as well. So okay, that's, that's awesome. yeah, so that's a little bit about my journey and kind of what brought me to the industry in the first place. 
Wow. And I know that's really hard um, when you're trying to start your business and you're not necessarily getting the support that you thought you would have um, in a sense, because I know you said that everyone's like, oh, you're not going to make money. And it's easy for people to portray their fears onto you when you're taking a leap to do something that many people don't want to do. And I know I like to say a lot is a lot of people can follow direction, but there are a few people who can create direction, which is entrepreneurship, because it's like, there's no blueprint. You're literally just going, you're literally just going. So how are you able to say, okay, this is really what I love to do. And I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to make this work despite what everyone is saying. So, you know, it's it's interesting that you bring that up. Um, when I had gotten out of college, I had done an internship in cardiac research and I got a job at a hospital right away working in cardiac mm -hmm. research. And um, I love research because of all the people that you can touch and the, the wonderful um, kind of ripple effect that goes along with that. Mm -hmm. However, um, I didn't like the red tape of it. And in order for me to leave the industry, I had to take a 50% pay cut. So wow. my my husband at the time was like, you can't. And I was, he's like, we've got to pay, you, you can't. And I finally, after months of going back and forth with him, I'm like, I can't continue like this. Like it's affecting my body. Cause I was gaining weight mm -hmm. from sitting at a desk all day. <laughs> like, right. I, I, I can't not, I, I can't not go do this. Like I have to. So mm -hmm. despite what, um, you know, what other people wanted me to do, I did it anyways. <laughs> I did it anyways. Yeah, you and then, for yourself. Yeah. And then what I found was um, actually a, a lot of great mentorship along the way. So mm -hmm. um, that first job, I had a very wonderful boss who was just very understanding and really highlighted and pointed out um, the money that could be made in personal training. Mm -hmm. And at this particular place, we didn't really focus on personal training, mm -hmm. but she really wanted to. <laughs> and I think that that program's taken off since then. But right. um, I eventually ended up leaving. We moved away and I, I started working at a for-profit gym where I actually came across a couple of really good mentors that really helped me with sales and marketing. So I was working there as an independent contractor and if you don't know how to sell at least the way that the industry works now if you don't know mm -hmm. how to sell and you don't have somebody selling for you you're not going to survive it does not matter how right. intelligent you are it does not matter how much you know about the body they don't teach you about sales in school they teach you right. about the body <laughs> but mm -hmm. then when you go out into the real world if you don't have those people skills, if you don't have those selling skills, if you don't have that belief in yourself, if you don't have that belief in your own knowledge, if you don't, if you don't value yourself, you're not going to make it. Mm -hmm. right. So fortunately for me, I had some really great mentors that not only taught me about how to kind of go about selling, but really taught me about how to look into myself and how to really mm -hmm. believe in myself because that belief comes out. It comes mm -hmm. out and then people are drawn as to confidence. Them. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have to believe in yourself before anybody else will, because let's say you're just like, Oh, can you guys buy from me? Can you guys please sign up for my course? Can you guys like, nobody's going to hear that. Like you have to be confident that you are the best. Like this is why someone should come and hire you or buy your services or buy your products because you produce the best period. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And you have to know what you're, what you're giving people too, you know? Mm -hmm. So when we're in school, we learn all these different things and there's all these different, um, styles of teaching. There's all these different modes that you can engage in and it's all kind of on personal preference. So mm -hmm. when I was in college, I would run not because I was good at it, and not because I really liked it, but because that's kind of what people were doing. So I'm like, well, I'm going to do right. this. It's fine. And it eventually, like I started having a lot of problems with my hips and I just stopped mm -hmm. running. Like I just stopped doing it. Right. But I found that over the years, the people that I identified with the most, the clients that stuck with me the longest, 
were the ones who kind of wanted the same thing that started me off in the first place. Mm -hmm. So I kind of fell into this niche, not really intentionally, but I think it happens a lot is of what brought me to fitness in the first place. So mm -hmm. getting women stronger right? and fighting off their health problems by picking mm -hmm. up weights. So by really right. focusing on getting people stronger. So a weight loss, like I, I don't really help people lose weight. It's great mm -hmm. that there are people out there that do that. Mm -hmm. And people that come to me will lose weight, but usually that's not the end the goal. Focus. The end goal is yeah. usually to feel better and to feel stronger and to be able to mm -hmm. do more. Um, and it's just kind of interesting because that's what I was super passionate about. Mm -hmm. And that's how I help people. Right. That's awesome. I think, you know, just helping women to find their power, find their confidence, find um, their strength and gain energy is itself powerful. And that is an increase in health, like to my, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. And you running, um, I can tell you, I love help working out, but running is not for me. I have tried the running miles and it just does not work for me. I will stick with hit cardio mm -hmm. or I'll do like a few sprints on the treadmill, but that's all you're going to get out of me. I'll jump rope, all of that, but not long distance running. <laughs> it's not yeah. for me. Cardio is so not my favorite. Like I'll do it because I have to, but like it's mm -hmm. not. And everybody knows that about me that like I just cardio is not my favorite. I mean, it's definitely an important component of fitness and it right. shouldn't be ignored, but like, whew, man, those runners yeah. have got my respect. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> I know. Cause it's, it's hard. It's tough. It's really yeah. tough to get in that type of shape. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of hard practice. So I know um, earlier we spoke about how um, health and fitness can help your mindset in other places and avenues in your life. So how would you say you've helped some of your clients to improve their mindset um, for the better, for the betterment of their life? I would say that, you know, just being able to get through a workout that they would never have been able to do before um, has been huge. It, it, it opens up the mind in a totally different way. So when women start with me and I always try to make it so that it's challenging enough, but not like you feel like you're going to die. You know, right. like, <laughs> so some trainers are of a different mindset, but like, I, I like to push people just to pass where they're comfortable, where they're mm -hmm. definitely going to feel it, right. but not to the point where they're going to you know, want to set me on fire when they're done. Mm -hmm. So what I found that happens quite commonly with new clients after a couple of weeks, they usually come to me and say, I, I, I can't believe I just did that. You know, so they've been working out with me for like maybe three, four weeks and they get done with that workout and they're like, wow, I can't believe that I just did that. Like the first time we did that, I, it was so hard and I feel <laughs> so much better. Like I'm so impressed with myself. I can feel the difference mm. and it was still hard, but it was better and they feel right. better and they're impressed with their own ability to change. And mm -hmm. that, and they'll be like, oh, well, you did it. No, I didn't do it. You did it. I just told you what to do. <laughs> I didn't do anything. Right. You did it. And they're like, oh yeah, I did. So I think that that's, um, it's very rewarding when mm -hmm. your clients are sharing with you the, the benefits that they're getting, not only physically, but in their ability to look at themselves as a, as a person. Mm-hmm. And I think it's very important because I think um, it opens up our mind to think more clearly and to just be more innovative in a sense, because health and fitness just, I, I'm, we talked about it earlier, how when you don't eat the right foods, you're definitely going to feel it. So it's like, if you're getting yourself in shape, if you're getting yourself um, to eat healthier, then it just all around just turns around your life completely because it's like now 
you're see you're able to see things clear you're able to be more creative you're able to say wow like i didn't know that was possible i didn't know that i was capable of doing that so i think it does have a very important shift on the mind um so what would you say has been some things that you've helped people in a sense of their life or their career how has your training on your fitness tips help someone in their their personal life or their career mindset so, wise mindset wise so you know it's funny i actually have a client who um, ended up leaving her career because mm -hmm. she was she was very stressed out and she worked in a very um, high high paying position and mm -hmm we would work on mindset regularly because her stress was so high you know her stress mm. was just i mean she would come in and sometimes she would just be like i am just so mad she actually ended up leaving that career mm. and there was a huge mindset shift that kind of mm. occurred there about her ability to do things differently and her uh, ability to um, not engage in this high stress stuff that she didn't really need it and that what mm -hmm. she really needed was exercise letting go you know embracing a healthy living style and happiness mm -hmm. kind of comes along with that so right. she had a career change and along with that like she <coughs> excuse me okay. she just said you know you've been telling me this all along Mm-hmm. Yes, I have. <laughs> but it's just funny because when, when people really start feeling better, sometimes you don't know how bad you're feeling until you start mm -hmm. to feel better. Right. And then once you start to feel better, all different kinds of changes happen. Right. right. So like you were talking about just a, just a second ago, you know, your mind can kind of really shift and open up to everything that you're capable of. And everything mm -hmm. that you're holding on to that you might not necessarily need in your life, you you can let it go. So mm -hmm. I think it's really kind of amazing how when you make physical changes, the mm -hmm. mental changes will usually follow suit. The same mm -hmm. thing kind of goes in the other way too, though. So if you are working really hard in a physical aspect and you're not doing any of the mental work, you can actually really be holding yourself back from meeting those goals. So mm -hmm. the mind and body really do work hand in hand. And it's really hard to say which one has to come first, but like you really want to be improving both all the time. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, I know speaking about your client that you were just um, talking about, stress and working a lot, they definitely affect you in a way. And it's like, it's like you can be, working out a lot and eating healthy, but that stress just has this negative impact on your body. So um, how would how do you tell your clients who are experiencing stress like that in their jobs or their careers to, how do you use health and fitness to decrease that stress or get them to, you know, take on less or something? So stress actually has a huge impact on your hormone levels. And um, if you're not dealing with the stress, you're actually, I mean, like you said, like even though you're working out and you're eating right, you're not gonna get anywhere because your stress levels are so high. Right. So that's where um, kind of coaching comes in with teaching them breath work, teaching mm -hmm. them about meditation and the importance of it and teaching them how to kind of channel that stress. So like I was talking about that one client, if she came in and had an angry day, whew, I could get a lot out of her. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, those are the days we would bring out like the battle ropes and the, the punching bag <laughs> and all that stuff. But she always felt better when she left. Right. So what was nice was I was really able to teach her how to kind of channel that. And it, mm -hmm. not just her. I mean, I, I, I do that with all of my clients when they're super angry. Right. Like if, if they walk in and they tell me that they're angry, I'm like, okay, let's go. Let's get it out. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I know I'm going to be able to get it out of them and they'll feel better when they leave. But right. it's definitely a process trying to, trying to teach how to do that. Mm -hmm. But once they get it, like, it's almost like they're 
appreciation for health and fitness mm -hmm. starts to elevate mm -hmm. and then they, they they love it even more than they did well they don't always love right. it but minds don't always love it <laughs> <laughs> but they appreciate it a little bit more than they did before mm -hmm. and i think it's like an awareness as well because i'm not even going to lie um before i started doing yoga i didn't even realize that i was barely breathing like i would forget to breathe mm -hmm. and it was just kind of like messing me all the way up there's like tensing my body up and I was like wow you know they you know the vinyasas and just the breathing techniques I was like wow like that's what it feels like to just like not forget to breathe <laughs> so it's like I think it's like an awareness for to relax your body to release tension and it's going to improve your health and fitness just by not just by breathing you know yeah. it's not even yeah. having to work out and eat healthy just by breathing you can improve your health and fitness alone so i think that's a big thing especially for people with stressful positions i know they definitely forget to breathe sometimes yeah i you know i know a couple of breathwork ac experts and mm. i've gone to a breathwork clinic and this it's amazing amazing what the body will do from the power of breath and like releasing stress um, mm -hmm. is huge. Like it's an animal instinct and us as humans have mm -hmm. the ability to kind of stop it, which is mm -hmm. not really good <laughs> <laughs> because then we're holding on to this stress. Right. But the breath can release it. And it's, um, it's quite empowering to know because anybody can do that. It does not matter mm -hmm. who you are or what kind of limitations you have. Right. You can absolutely exercise your breath and manage all sorts of issues just by breathing. Yes, definitely. It's a huge game changer. Mm -hmm. um, so what is one thing that you do that you would say has surprised you in a sense of inspiring your clients? I would say that um, it doesn't surprise me anymore Mm -hmm. But I would say that the interactions with other people, mm -hmm. it, it definitely surprised me earlier on in my career where mm -hmm. I would watch people engage with each other. Um, and usually it was about me. It was like, oh, she's going to put you through the ringer today. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so you, usually it was, it was about something that I was doing. Like they were, it was a, you know, I was the butt of the joke. Mm -hmm. But I found that they really enjoyed the banter with each other, even though they didn't know each other and they just see each other in passing, was that they uh -huh. would really enjoy the banter. <laughs> and if, if they didn't, hadn't seen each other for a while, they would ask me, hey, do you still train that lady? You know, the one with the <laughs> curly hair? I haven't seen mm -hmm. her in a while. Yeah, she comes in the morning now. Oh, okay. Tell her I said hello. And it's just kind of <laughs> funny because um, they have like this sense of camaraderie, even mm -hmm. though they don't know each other. Right. And that to me was a little surprising, um, but mm -hmm. I think it's actually really normal <laughs> in this, yeah. this kind of environment. But in my early years, like I definitely found that to be surprising was that strangers were motivating each other. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like this, I don't know, it's like a, a bond, but it's like a detached bond in a sense because it's like you're not really trying to figure out everything about their life or become best friends. It's just that you two share this common goal and this common interest and you're like, oh, I like her just because we're kind of doing the same thing. We're, yeah. we're encouraging each other. So it's like, it's, it's crazy. It's interesting. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was definitely something that like when I first started noticing it, I was just like, hmm, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I, I, that was something that, um, and I've definitely developed a huge interest in it because of that. So. Mm -hmm. No, that's awesome. So how would you say your version of success has changed? Because I know that you went from the whole cardiac research thing, you had to take a pay cut, and now you're really doing something that you completely love out of the goodness of your heart. And how would you say your version of success has changed um, from that? I, you know, I think that finding success is definitely relative to the person 
that's sitting mm -hmm. in front of you. And I find that success is usually not synonymous with financial gain. A lot of right. people tend to make that like, you know, money means happiness. Mm -hmm. But I find Definitely that like it, <laughs> it doesn't, you know, it doesn't lead to fulfillment. It leads you to the ability to buy things mm -hmm. and it may lead you the ability to um, do things that you enjoy doing. But mm -hmm. if you're not enjoying what you're doing on a regular basis, <laughs> you're not going to enjoy that vacation the same way you would no, if you were happy all the time. So I think, <laughs> you know, finding success is really, it's kind of in the small stuff. It's in the day to day. It's in like, like we were talking before the show, it's in like getting your water goal in for the day. Like that right. to me is, I'm like, that was a successful day. Like I got mm -hmm. all of my water in, I did my workout. I did almost everything that I wanted to do today. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling pretty good. So right. I, I, you know, I, I think success is a lot more in, um, your vision of yourself, mm -hmm. your feeling about how you are in your relationships, mm -hmm. about what you're bringing to, to the table mm -hmm. more or less, you know, for other people. And I think it's more about how, how you feel about your life. Like I, I, right. I think it's more of a feeling than a number than something that's tangible yeah i mean i completely get it just because um wow i just went completely blank for a second <laughs> i was just going to intervene on something um okay yeah so um i think it's completely um awesome that you said that and just the simple fact of that we need to celebrate the little things, the little accomplishments. And I think that's what health and fitness is all about because it's like, we may be sitting here and we're like, okay, like my business hasn't made a million dollars yet. Okay, but you made a thousand dollars in that one day. You should be celebrating that accomplishment. So health and fitness gets you into celebrating those small accomplishments and appreciating your journey because it's like, Wow, woo, I lost one pound today. I lost two pounds today. Today I felt better. Today I was able to do this and I wasn't able to do it yesterday. I think it helps individuals to appreciate things a little bit more, appreciate the small things, appreciate their journey in a sense. Yeah, and you know, kind of playing off of what you just said, I think that, you know, universally people understand that you didn't get to where you are overnight. And you can't expect mm -hmm. to get changes the next day. Like nobody expects to get a six pack after doing, you know, one no. sit up, right? Like nobody expects <laughs> that. So right. there's a- there's I mean, it might big, hurt and you might say, well, wait, let me look down and check. <laughs> yeah, you might feel it, you know, but um, you know, no, nobody expects you to, you know, look like a bodybuilder when you're right. eating pizza and not working out. <laughs> Right. <laughs> but they also understand that when you start going into your workouts, that the change is going to be gradual. So getting through mm -hmm. the workout is a reward in itself. And you know that you're progressing towards something, no, you know, definitely. and what you can see the visuals. Like if you, if you take pictures and if you take different types of measurements, more than mm -hmm. just the scale, but if you take different types of measurements, you can see your progress. So even though you can, might not necessarily see it in the mirror every day, you can look back mm -hmm. and see like, wow, I look like a totally different person. So like some of my colleagues will do, um, like someone in my group, she does a face to face Friday and I love uh -huh. it because it has a, you know, like a, a snapshot of the same person mm -hmm. and they'll have like the starting date and the ending date. And the transformation is huge and it's not just good mm -hmm. for inspiration for other people but it's good motivation mm -hmm. for what they're doing you right. know it keeps you going and keeps you along that journey mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and so i think that health and fitness and you know having health and fitness goals it actually can help you from a business standpoint to mm -hmm. understand that yes i'm going like Yes, I'm, I, I want to make a million dollars, but I only made a thousand. But I can see that 
I just have to keep going because that's the way that it works. Right. You just have to keep going in order to get to that goal. Like you're, you're not going to get it overnight and you shouldn't expect it. <laughs> definitely. But you, definitely. Yeah. So what would you say is one thing you would say to the audience to inspire them to dream with unlimited possibilities and to, you know, just go for their dreams and do what they love? You know, I would say don't let anything hold you back. Like if you know in your heart of hearts that you have a passion and a desire for whatever, whether it's health and fitness, whether it's entrepreneurship, whether it's, you know, helping people get drinking water, you need to be moving in that direction. Mm -hmm. And you need to be finding mentors to help pull you up because that's the way that it works. <laughs> you you mm -hmm. need guidance. Every, every great leader has always had a mentor, right? Every great leader, mm -hmm. if you look back through history, has surrounded themselves with people who are like-minded, mm -hmm. people who are wanting to move towards the same goal, people who have um, complementary talents, right? Mm -hmm. So they don't go and bring on a bunch of people that just do everything the same way, right? They bring right. on a diverse group of people that um, mm -hmm. can collaborate and create a mastermind. So I would say if you're wanting to go after whatever you're wanting to go after, do it, do mm -hmm. it. You can do it. You just need to look at who you're surrounding yourself with and make sure that you're putting those, the right people in your path and that you're making connections with people you want to be connected with. The right. only person getting oh, in your definitely. way is you. Definitely. You are the only roadblock to your success because mm -hmm. once you overcome everyone's thoughts, you know, your own thoughts, you know, just research everything. That's when you can break the mold and begin to get to work. <laughs> Absolutely. But we really appreciate you for coming and sharing your story. It was so much fun because, you know, like we could probably go on and on and on and on and on. Um, really, really appreciated our conversation today. Um, would you go ahead and allow the audience to know where they can contact you if they need help or where they can find you and follow your journey? Absolutely. So, you know, I, like I said, I, I do run two different companies and if you're wanting to get in touch with me, the best place would be to probably just go straight to my website and, um, fill out one of the forms and that's going to be fitness solutions with wendy.com. Um, you can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, um, LinkedIn. I'm all over all of those platforms and it's the same name, Fitness Solutions with Wendy. So okay. that's going to be the best way to get in touch with me is through either of those, you know, either of those methods. And um, mm -hmm. I'm super responsive. So just if you want to send me an email or a direct message or comment, whatever, whatever you're comfortable with, I'm, I'm very responsive. Awesome. 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 Well, thank you once again, Wendy, for sharing your story with us today and inspiring women all around the world. Thank you to the audience once again for tuning in. Once again, I'm your host, Maya Chanel, and thank you for tuning in to Made to Dream. See you next time.